I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you are going to install a Lua script on your Tyrannus. You didn't know you wanted to do this, but you want to do this because it's going to let you change your PIDs, change your rates, and adjust your video transmitter settings if you're using Smart Audio all from your Tyrannus radio. No need to go into an OSD or any of that. Just right there from your radio. Does that sound pretty cool? Stay tuned. In the first video in this series, we upgraded the Tyrannus to OpenTX version 2.2.0. And you do need to be running OpenTX version 2.2.0 on your radio in order to use the Lua script that we're going to put on the radio in this video. This is the video where we'll actually get the Lua script working, right? That's what you're here for. Even if you have a radio that came from the factory with 2.2.0, or if you've already updated it to 2.2.0 previously, you need to make sure that you installed the Lua script firmware on it. So just because you're running 2.2.0 doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to do what we're going to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this uh, URL and I'm going to download the script itself. And which file you download will depend on which radio you've got. So for the X9D, like I've got, I'm going to download the X9. If you've got the QX7, you'll download X7. And if you've got the Horus, you'll download the Horus version. I'm going to download the X9 version. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my radio to the computer in bootloader mode. I'm going to do that by holding in the two trim switches and flipping this power switch up. It'll come up in bootloader mode. And then once I've done that, I'll go ahead and connect the USB. Having done that, these, uh, these removable drives will pop up. And one of them is named Tyrannus SD. It was pointed out in the comments of my first video Yours might not be named Tyrannus SD. I might have named it that and forgot that I did it. But there's one of them that's Tyrannus, and it contains these bin files, and you don't need that one. Just leave that one alone. And there's one of them that is your SD card. Mine is called Tyrannus SD. In the browser, I'm going to go ahead and open up that zip file, and I'm just going to put it over on one side of the screen, and I'm going to put my SD card over on the other side of the screen. And then I'm going to take this folder, and I'm just going to drag it over to the SD card. If you prefer to do that by taking the SD card out of the Tyrannus, you certainly can do that. I just find it easier to do it this way than to open up the Tyrannus and pull the SD card out. Now the Lua script is installed on the Tyrannus SD card. We just need to set the Tyrannus up to use the Lua script. I'm going to unplug the USB. And I'm going to exit out of here. Or power cycle. In the Tyrannus, I'm going to hit the menu button, and I need to go to page 13. You can see here, this is page 1 of 13, and if I hit the page key, I'll step through these menu pages. I want to show you a little trick you may not have been aware of. This is your bonus trick for this one. If I just go to the menu, and you hold down the page key, you know, if you press it one time, it goes forward, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you hold it down, it goes backward. And that's extra nice because if you've ever been stepping through these menus, I'm going to the mixer screen. Oh, I overshot. Now I have to go all the way back through again. I'm actually a little embarrassed to tell you how long I owned a Tyrannus before I knew this trick. So if you ever want to, if you ever skip past the screen you mean to be going to and you want to go back, just hold down the page key and it'll go backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit menu one time and then I'm going to hold down the page key to go back to screen 13 of 13, which is the display screen, or you can just press page key 13 times to get there. From here, I'm going to go down to screen one. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to choose up, 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 script. That's a Lua script. If you don't see script here, it means you don't have the Lua enabled version of the firmware on your Tyrannus. You need to go back to video number one and do the things I did in video number one. Then I'm going to go here. And I'm going to choose, well, there's only one script installed on my radio. It's the Betaflight script. I'm going to choose that. And that's going to make screen number one access or run the Betaflight Lua script. In order to actually run the script, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the page key. That's a little counterintuitive, but that's how you do it. And here we go. We're in the script. Now, I've got no, I've got no data here because there's no quadcopter powered up at the moment. So let me go ahead and power up quadcopter so we can actually see some live data. And now that the quadcopter is powered up and, of course, telemetry is working, which is a topic for another video, I've got the PIDs right here in the screen. So I can use the up and the down arrow to step between the values. I can use enter to change the value up and down. Right? And I can use menu 
to either reload the page and discard my changes or save the page and write to the copters. The page we're looking at right now is the PIDs page. To go to the other pages, you hit not the page key. No, that would be too easy. You actually hit the menu key. I, I don't know why they couldn't use the page key for that, but they don't. So I'm going to hit the menu key one time to skip to the rates page and one time to skip to the VTX page. And oh, my VTX is at 200 milliwatts right now and um, it's just sitting there. I don't want it to overheat. So let's go ahead and let's just turn that down to 25. Now remember, these updates are not done in real time. So I need to hit menu, hold it down and then hit enter on save page. And now it's writing the value to the quad. Now the, the transmitter is at 25 milliwatts. And the same thing would be done if, for example, you wanted to change your PID. So, for example, let's say I've been flying and, oh, I want to take my D gains up a little bit. So I'm going to take my D gains up to 40 and 40. And then I'm going to press menu and hold it down and save page to write that to the quad. And then finally, to get out of there, you press exit, except you can see I'm pressing exit and nothing's happening. You got to hold exit down and that takes you back to your radio the normal way. And now the Lua script is working for you. Well, it's working for you if your copter already has telemetry set up. If you don't have telemetry set up on your copter, then you're going to need to watch the next video to learn how to set that up. You know, I hear a lot of people saying, now that I've got Betaflight OSD, I don't care about telemetry anymore. I can just look at my data on the OSD. And in fact, that's one of the appeals of the XM Plus receiver. The XM Plus receiver doesn't do telemetry. It's a really nice, tiny receiver. It's only 15 bucks, 16 bucks. It's great, but it doesn't do telemetry. And I, for me, that's a little bit of a deal breaker because I like telemetry, but I also really like this feature. This is really cool. So if you want to be able to use this feature, you do need a telemetry capable receiver like the XSR or X4R SB, or I think Furious FPV also makes a micro receiver that does do telemetry. I hope that we'll see a, a, an XM Plus receiver with telemetry built in soon so that even people who are using those tiny, tiny receivers can take advantage of this great feature. That's going to do it for now. Uh, stay tuned for the next video in the series, which is going to be part of my How to Wire a Flight Controllers playlist. It's a different playlist, and we'll talk about how to wire up and configure telemetry. That's going to do it for this one, though. Leave any questions you've got down in the comments, of course. Thanks for watching, as always, and happy flying.